Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Conceive, believe, achieve. Shut the f*** up. <laughs> You're listening to Believe You Me with Michael the Count Bisbing. You know my name yet? And Anthony Lionheart Smith. Did you see uh, on Twitter the other day I put on, there was another video, our budgie got attacked again by a hawk. Did you see that video I put on? I did. I commented that hawk is a little menace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It, it wasn't the other hawk, the budgie that died. It was, a, it was a hawk, a legit hawk that flew down. And this is what they do. It happened to us before. Our vet told us, because Rebecca took him through a vet, they smash into the side of bird cages to knock the budgies or the parakeets for the American crowd off their perch, and then they stick their talons in and rip them out through the bars. So, yeah, Rebecca Rebecca heard lo- the two birds squawking and squeaking and all the rest of it. She ran outside. There's a giant hawk on the cage. Uh, Robin, he's, he was all sliced open, bless him. Um, he's okay, though. Guys, I know everyone is very, very concerned about the pet budgie. He's going to make a full recovery, I think. I don't know. He's still limping around a little bit. He's got one feather that's sticking up, so he looks a little disheveled. He looks like Mike Harrington after a good old-fashioned bender. But never mind that. Welcome to the show, everybody. Hope you're all well today. 297 Preview, of course. Lots of stuff going on in the world of mixed martial arts. We've got the co-main event winner of last weekend and the man that will be fighting on UFC 100, 200, and 300, Jim A. 10 Miller, of course, will be joining us. Also, another guy that will be fighting on UFC 300, Alexander the Rocket Rakic, will be joining us talking about his fight with Yuri Prohaska and what he's generally been up to and giving us a few predictions as well. Um, how are you, Harrington? Dude, I'm doing, I'm doing excellent, getting over a cold. So that's always the, I don't know, I feel like, like getting sick where you're coughing and sneeze constantly, like it just makes you way more appreciative of being able to breathe. So like that last day of a cold might be like the, like, uh, you know, the best time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're on a big health kick January. You know what I mean? We're, we're, st- we're still doing it. We're still doing it. I fell off the wagon a little bit at the weekend cause I was in Vegas and nothing crazy, but you know, Monday to Friday, I am killing it. Uh, trying to anyway, trying to. So anyway, hope you feel better soon. Uh, speaking of feeling better, Drickers Duplessis, Sean Strickland, they're feeling better about each other because as we know, Strickland said he's going to stab him if he mentions that again. There was a lot of bad tension. They had a brawl at 296, and then they encounter one another in the hotel, and it was nothing but love and appreciation and respect. There was a nice hug. Drickus even said good luck to him, uh, which I thought was great. You know what I mean? This fight kind of sells itself. Two great fighters. I'm very, very excited for this one. Uh, But I thought that was nice to see, given, you know, how high the tensions got. You know, um, and for anyone that thinks it might have been strange for Drickers to say good luck, I totally get it. I said that to Anderson Silva right before we fought in the cage. I said, good luck. And what you mean is, you mean, look, listen, we're both professionals. We're both going to try and pummel each other to death. But at the end of it, hopefully we go back to our families and we continue to live good lives. So I don't know about you, Harrington, but I kind of like that. I thought it was nice. Yeah, I mean, especially, you know, somebody like Anderson in that case who, who you know, was coming off, you know, a b- bad injury at, at, at one point there. You know, it's like you just don't you, you want to win a fight, but you don't want somebody like you do wish good luck upon them. You don't wish the worst for this person. Subliminally taking stripping down my win over Anderson Silva. Oh, Anderson coming off a serious injury. It just beaten Nick Diaz or someone or Derek Brunson. I don't know. Yeah, he beat Nick Diaz and Derek Brunson. I heard Anderson Silva was 115% for that fight, Mike Bisbing. I heard yeah. Anderson Silva was juiced out of his mind as well. Uh, <laughs> ha- old Hamilton. Bloody hell. First comment on the show, trying to take away my accomplishment. It's a joke. <laughs> it's a bloody um, joke. I did not expect, though, the, the dap, the hug. Like, those two, I thought if they got that close to each other, it's because war was coming you know yeah but you know drick is there with his lady right and i think at that point anyone that knows how to behave they're not going to start kicking up a fuss or a ruckus when somebody's with their partner you know what i mean you'd have to be a certain level of piece of shit to do that you know and by the way i didn't do that in new york because Jorge Masvidal, remember that said that i did that i didn't do that he his wife and i didn't even know it was his wife was pushing a buggy uh, with the baby in it, 
And they walked past me. And then as I walked past Maz Vidal, he started chatting shit. We got into a little altercation. But hope you're well, Maz Vidal. Um, anyway, the press conference is later today. What are you expecting at that press conference? Do you think it's going to continue with the, the cordialness, the niceties, the respect? Or, or do you yeah, think I'm- Strickland's going to, you know, go back to being good old-fashioned Strickland? Look, you put a mic in front of Sean Strickland, he's going to say some things because, like, at this point, I, I, it feels kind of like click farming. You know what I mean? Like, Sean Strickland has figured out, like, oh, I can, I can kind of blow up on social media just like all these other guys. Let me go say some wild stuff. I don't think it's necessarily going to be directed at DDP, though. You know, like, I don't, I don't think he wants to poke that bear because he doesn't, I, he doesn't want to poke that bear because he doesn't want Drikus to go to that level. <laughs> To then now he's in a position where it's like, well, if I don't stab him, I'm a liar. Well, well, look, here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing, right? You vote for Trudeau because he's blown up on social media yesterday for his media day, talking uh, talking about Canadians and talking about reporters and talking about uh, a lot of um, sensitive subjects, sh- shall we say? Castro Jr. trying to turn Canada more communist. Weird. <laughs> no, I know, I know. <laughs> um, what do we think about this fight? So I'll tell you this. I did a little video breaking down all of their skills. And Drigas Duplessis, for me, is ahead on all of them. Well, mo- most of them. I think if you look at striking, obviously the fight starts on the feet. I think Drigas is more effective. He's more powerful. I don't think he's as technical as Sean. Sean, great footwork, good defensive skills, uh, works behind that jab. And once he gets his rhythm and his timing and starts to feel more comfortable, he follows up. But Drickers just walks people down. And I think it's going to be hard for Sean to kind of play that game, being on the back foot the whole time, if Drickers is walking him down. So I give him a, a, an edge there. Maybe not in technique, but he's effective. You know, he's very, very effective. When it comes to wrestling, I think he's the better wrestler. Did you see that video of Drickers submitting an entire Gracie team? By himself at a quintet performance. Yeah, 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 yeah. He got uh, what was the three subs, and then then he got the decision on the last yeah. guy. Incredible. Yeah. No, exactly. So yeah, and he's got a lot of subs on his record. I probably give him the edge in jujitsu. Sean's very good on the ground though, so that one could be kind of even. Power, strength. I think you got to go with Drickus. Cardio, I'll give to Sean. You know, Drickus has shown that he gets tired quite a lot, but apparently he's had the miracle nose. Uh, replacement thingy Bob done. Uh, he's had surgery to fix that. Um, and Hart, it's probably an even Steven on that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, those are, those are two, those have to be the two most like, you know, walk through a fire kind of guys, you know, at 185 right now. Um, so yeah, I, I, I agree on the heart thing. The, the cardio I found interesting because Drikas did say he's like, you know, in ECF and uh, these other smaller promotions. He has been booked in a number of five round fights and he's mm-hmm. like straight up. It never makes it. It never makes it to the championship rounds if I'm fighting. So it's like, yeah, I, I do agree. Strickland's biggest advantage is the cardio, but it can Strickland get to a fourth, fifth round with, with somebody who puts on the kind of pace that Drikas does? Well, I mean, that's the big, big question. And that is why Drikas does get tired because he does go forward. He is very reckless, not reckless. That's a bit mean. Uh, but he's, he's aggressive, super aggressive, and maybe slightly to a fault, but that makes him an exciting fighter. Me and Anthony were talking about it on Monday, I think. You know what I mean? When you have a more conservative approach, you don't get as tired. Well, Drick is his redlining. He's sprinting. He's got the pedal to the metal constantly. That's why he gets tired, but he does have the heart to push through it. I was also saying on this video, it's like a lot of the time getting tired, it's a mental block. It's It's choosing to give up. It's choosing to say, I'm done. Choosing to say, that's it. I, I don't have the mental toughness or fortitude to push through to that next level because you can always dig that little bit deeper. We all want to stop. We all want to curl up in a ball. We all want to say, whoa, 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 time out. I'm tired, you know? But you off, more often than not, if you really want it, if you really push through it, you can find that next gear. Uh, and Drickers has done that every time, but he has got tired. You can't deny that. You know what I'm saying? So I do give Strickland uh, an advantage in cardio, but I'll come out and say, I think my prediction for that fight, I've got Drickers. I mean, I I think Drickers gets the stoppage. I think if there's going to be a decision, Sean Strickland wins by decision. I can't see him stopping Drickers. You never know. It could hurt him and then finish him with a sub, but I don't really see that happening. I mean, Sean is going to be very, 
confident in his power, obviously dropping Izzy, beating him over five rounds, beating Airbus Magomedov in the second round. You know, so he's Previously and he is definitely say again. Previously undefeated, yep. Abus Magomedov stopped him. Yeah, yeah, no, he stopped him. Uh, Abus Magomedov did not pace himself, though, one little bit. But, hey, maybe that's what Drickis does. Maybe that's what doesn't pace himself either. You know what I mean? So I've got Drickis. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I've been saying Drickis all week. Um, so I, I think I, I kind of have to kind of have to stick with that. I do. I like the idea of a third round stoppage. But I mean, man, if this thing does get into the championship rounds, I just there's very little I could imagine scarier than being as tired as I've seen. Like, imagine the Drickis heading into the third round of that Darren Till fight. And then Sean Strickland coming at you with just clean one twos, right? Backing you up, just, just constantly pushing forward with that jab. There's very little more terrifying than that. And I could see a situation where Drikas is just, he's so gassed out on the feet. Sean could just TKO him with nothing but volume, right? Just put yeah. enough pressure on him and, and keep that jab and find, you know, where he's able to land seven, eight, nine, ten 10 shots unanswered before the ref has to just step in and, and call it. But I think Drikas does get it done somewhere in the first three rounds. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I, I mean, Sean's not an easy guy to finish. Yes, Pereira knocked him out, right? Beautiful left hook, went to the body, set that shot up perfectly. But he's not an easy man to beat. He's not an easy man to beat. That's why he's the champion of the world. But I have got a feeling, Drickus, 19 finishes out of 20 victories. You know what I mean? That, that's where I'm leaning. Brian, welcome to the show, my brother. Who hey, are, where are you and what do you say? I'm home. And uh, I think that Drikas is probably going to get it done, man. Uh, he's he's big and strong, and we've seen him knock a bunch of people out recently. So, uh, I mean, I it, we've seen Sean get cracked. His, like, Philly shell is super awkward. I, I don't know if it's going to work against the bombs from Drikas. Mm, mm, so, basically, it's a BYM clean sweep for Drikas Duplessis. We've got no, no counter arguments. No dissent we know here. Who did Harrington, uh, sorry, Harrington, who did Anthony pick on Monday? Do we know? Do we remember? I think he no. also picked Drikis, but I might be putting words in his mouth. Okay. Okay. As long as that's all you're putting in his mouth. Hey. Hey. <laughs> oh, uh, but yeah, co-main event, of course, Raquel Pennington, Myra Bueno Silva. I'll just keep this one a bit shorter. I like Raquel Pennington. I like the way she fights. Uh, she's been in there with so many great fighters, lots of former champions, Amanda Nunes, Holly Holm, Jermaine Durandame. She lost to all of them, but granted, she showed up. She's been in there. She's got the experience. I think she's on a five-fight win streak, if I'm not mistaken, but hasn't been too active. I think she's coming back from an injury. But Bueno Silva, last time we saw her against Holly Holm, all right, granted, that was overturned because of a failed test with USADA, right? I think she got a short suspension. But she looked bloody good in that fight. She's fast. She's dynamic. She's powerful. She's got great submissions. What was it? A ninja choke in round two against uh, Holly Holm. So mm -hmm. Holly, even though, with respect, she's getting a little bit longer in the tooth, she's not an easy person to beat like that. So um, I've got Bueno Silva. Come on, Harrington. This is your forte, women's MMA. Sean Strickland oh, doesn't like oh. women's MMA. Mike <laughs> Harrington loves it. Who's your favorite MMA fighter, Harrington? Uh, well, I mean, somebody who Raquel Pennington beat, Misha Tate. Um, so, that's yeah, your favorite? That's a no, come on, man. I'm, I'm messing around. I'm playing the, I'm playing the game here. Um, who's your favorite female MMA fighter? Because Sean Strickland my, hates them all. My favorite female MMA fighter? I mean, Amanda Nunes is gone now. I mean, so probably, I mean, probably Rose. Try, try to not get excited for a Rose Namajunas fight. I dare you. Unless she's fighting Carlos Barza, obviously. That goes oh. without saying. Yeah, yeah. No, listen, I love Rose as well. I think she's phenomenal. But really? Really? Out of all? What about Zhang Wei Li? That's not doing anything I, for you? I feel like it's kind of hacked to just pick a champion. Um, you want a yeah. young Jacek? Valentina she's, she's Shevchenko? Retired. Tatiana Suarez? Do, ooh, now Valentina we're Shevchenko? <laughs> I mean, come on. No, I'm taking Rose, dude. Rose is, Rose is just dynamic, dude. She, there, there's something about her that, that's I don't know. It's very, very yeah. fun to watch. And she's the only one who could beat Zhang Wei Li. So, yeah, I'm taking Rose. What was it that Strickland said yesterday? Because uh, I did a live said, on my channel yesterday. And everyone, because I, I must have missed this, because I normally, you know, I scroll Twitter and stuff like that. And there's all the MMA stuff. Um, I, I, I was aware of most things, but everyone in the chat was like, did you see 
what Strickland said about women's MMA thought. I didn't see it. Now I have, but just remind me, what did he say? Uh, he said, I'd rather watch two lions fight, not two cats. Well, I'd rather see two lions fight over two cats as well. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I, I, I you got to be careful what you say here. There is some great female mixed martial artists, but it, I think it's also fair to say the talent pool is as deep. It's not as deep. You know, it hasn't. When did it start? 13, 14 in the UFC, 2013, I think, when Ronda Rousey came over. Um, it's just not as deep. It's like, imagine, I mean, yeah, okay, you know, it was a thing before the UFC signing them, but we'll use that as a benchmark. Um, imagine if men's MMA had only been going for 10 years. You know what I'm saying? So they wouldn't be as good. So the talent pool is not as deep. I understand Sean's point. I think he says things to be controversial. Uh, but he said, listen, what would you rather watch? Two men doing MMA or two women doing MMA? You know, I'll tell you what, Zhang Weili, Yohan Aion Jacek, that was an incredible fight, fight of the year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and I mean, like, you know, it, there, there are, it's interesting because there are outliers like that, but it also kind of does set women's MMA up for, for, you know, lack of success when you have like 10 men's fights on a card, two women's fights. And for the most part, like you said, that talent pool isn't there. So like at best, one of two of those fights is going to be good. If there's yeah. two female fights on a card, right? Just just sheer lack of, of talent. But at the very top upper echelon, these are very entertaining fights. And now that Amanda Nunes is gone, you know, Myra Blaine Silva, this might be the beginning of a, of a long, interesting reign. Mm, mm, yeah, well, I, I think at Bantamweight, it's going to be kind of like a hot potato, for want of a better word. You know, now that Amanda Nunes is gone, there's a lot of people vying and lobbying for that top position. But uh, it's a fun one. It's good to have the pay-per-views back. It's freezing cold in Toronto right now. What is it, like minus 10, something like that in Celsius? Blooming cold. Uh, Sean Strickland, of course, didn't just limit himself to talking about women's MMA. He was talking about Colby Covington. I thought this was pretty funny. Give me the quote. Uh, yeah, let me pull it up here. Uh, he's just fraudulent. Uh, I think to be a UFC fighter, it's a sense of entertainment, WWE, uh, but you want to base your character on authenticity. And then you have somebody like Colby, Colby, who is a fictional persona that he's created when he's not trying to fall on Trump's dick. It's the most cringeworthy shit, and it's so effed that Trump left the arena while he was giving his speech. It's like watching the ugly girl get rejected at a party. You feel bad for the guy at this point. Don't worry, Colby. He knows your name. Yeah. Oh, God, he knows your name. Um, <laughs> I do kind of feel bad for Colby at the minute because he's getting shit from all angles. You know, yeah, granted, he was out of line what he said about Leon's dad. The fight did not live up to expectations. Donald Trump did walk out of the building, you know, uh, you know, because, hey, but listen, you know what? So, so we always talk about Colby and we always say, Oh, but the character, the character, you know, but in real life, he's a nice guy. The reality is, though, playing a character or not, when you are playing that character, you're still responsible for the things you say and how you act and how you behave ultimately. So you can't just go, oh, I was in character, which he did to Leon at the weigh-ins, if you recall. He walked up, I was just in character, bro. I think because afterwards, he probably realized, wow, shit, that was a, an effed up thing to say. But yeah, I feel bad for Colby because he's not a bad guy deep down, but yeah, uh, you know. Got to get it together, man. Got to get it together. Yeah. I liked his, uh, like, I liked what it did, the conversation he had with Usman in the cage that was picked up uh, when he was like, yeah, man, sorry for, like, you know, all the, all the stuff. I, I, I was trying to make you money, right? He did that with Leon ahead of time. You know, he did it with Leon at the weigh-ins where it's like, that's not the time to do that. You do that after you guys have fought. Don't mm. let Leon know that you're already cracking, that this persona is fading while you're going to the way in. But it's like, dude, I don't know, man. You reap what you sow. You put that much negativity and nonsense out in the world and, and pick these fights with so many people and put yourself in a position where if you fail, you know you're going to get ridiculed. Well, then don't fail, yeah. dude. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Chalk. That is C-H-O-Q dot com. Look, men's testosterone levels are dipping all the time. They're at an all-time low. And not a day goes by that I don't see a guy who's either had a bad diet earlier on in life or low levels of testosterone naturally that could do with a little boost, right? So Chalk has created a new natural testosterone booster, which is taking the health world by storm. And I prefer Chalk for several reasons, mainly 
because the supplement world is filled with crappy supplements, simple as that. All the ingredients are nonsense, right? Chalk is proud to stand above the rest in clean, pure, and healthy products. They use full disclosure labeling so you know exactly what goes in there. Chalk is the cleanest research-based testosterone booster available on the market. There's no flat label fluffing. There's no underdosing. And all ingredients are measured to exact clinical research. So Chalk Daily, as I said, is the cleanest research-based testosterone booster available. It's going to give you a little bit more pep in your step, more energy, more drive, more results from your workout, and get you back to being your old self. So along with Chalk Daily, be sure to check out the Male Vitality Stack and the Stack Ultra. And of course, believe you me, we've got a great uh, offer for you. All you got to do is go to chalk.com, C-H-O-Q.com. While you're there, use the promo code BISPING to get 35% off your entire order. Pick up the rest of the 2024 with a bang. Do the uh, Start the new year the way you were supposed to. If you're feeling like you're dipping, if you're giving up already, boost that testosterone in a natural fashion and get back to being the you that you used to be. Go to chalk.com, C-H-O-Q.com. The code is BISPING. 35% off your entire order. All right, so we got a few minutes before uh, Jim Miller joins us, first guest of the day. Harrington, you got this here, number one in the notes. This sounds like a weird challenge. It says, here's what you put. Can you go a month without your smartphone? You can make $10,000 and 60 cups of yogurt from a company that sells Icelandic yogurt. They will pick 10 people and send them a locked box with a prepaid flip phone that you'd swap with your phone for a month to try and win the prize. What on earth? So the idea for this company, it's a, it's a New York based company that uh, sells Icelandic style yogurt. The, the concept is like, we're stripping away a lot of like the nonsense and fillers and stuff you don't need in, in, in yogurt. And they want to do the same thing for your life. Right? So it's like, uh, they're going to send you a flip phone. So you'll be able to make calls and probably use like the old, T9 system to send text messages. Um, but on the flip side, you, you, you don't have to deal with like all the apps, the TikTok, the Instagram, everything that could possibly take your time and attention away from you. You put that in a lockbox. By the end of the month, if you have not opened that lockbox up to mess with your cell phone, you get a check for 10K and they're going to reward you with, uh, I'm assuming, a month's supply, 60 cups, two cups a day of that uh, of their, their brand of yogurt. Well, you can take the 60 cups of yogurt and shove it up your ass. You know? <laughs> uh, I'm just on their website here. I was trying to see the ingredients because they're giving it all whoop de doo and la di da and we're so good and pure and all the rest of it. I guarantee that yogurt is not the best organic good stuff for you. Um, so take the 60 cups, but there's a lot of people out there that could do with $10,000 right now. Harrington, do you need $10,000? More Brian. than any. Brian, does Harrington I need $10,000? <laughs> I don't know about him, but I know I sure should do. Well, why don't you guys sign up? Okay, we should start a petition. We'll get the believers. I would pay money. So hold on. They lock you in a How box. How much? You have, so you have no $10,000. You put it in the goddamn notes, Harrington. You would give me ten grand to do no. this challenge? I'll do we'll that start a heartbeat. petition with Icelandic yogurt. <laughs> we will cover it on the podcast. We will get you on. You will be selected. Right? Give us all a break. <laughs> in fact, yeah, I will. I'll give you $10,000. Um <laughs> no, to be fair, I do like that because we are all on our smartphones too much. I was telling Lucas yesterday because Lucas, every time I look around at Lucas now, he's always on his bloody phone, you know. And granted, to be fair, when we were kids, I guess we watched too much TV. And TV isn't really a thing now, is it, other than streaming services, other than the news or live sports or cops reruns and Jerry Springer and bullshit. There's not much on these days. Um so, yeah, I get what they're doing, but $10,000, I would have thought there'd be many, many people signing up for that. Yeah, so uh, they're expecting a lot of people to. Entries opened yesterday, and they're going until the 31st. So you have to, uh, you have to go to their website, um, and they have, like, a Google Doc. Uh, what? You be by Icelandic yogurt. You're, like, directing everyone to the website and all the rest of it. I have not said the website because I don't want anyone else to join. I want this don't, 10 grand to have a yeah, phone. Yeah, we're having a conversation about the thing. So what you're going to do is you're going to sign up at www.icelandityogurt.com. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's like, um, I guess, you know, it's not a bad little way to try and get some, uh, some, 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 uh, 
social media, some news, some PR and all the rest of it. But uh, I didn't know that's what it was. I thought it was more about not using your smartphone. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess it is. I guess that's what it's all about. Would you want the 60 cups of yogurt? Yeah, obviously. My girl loves that stuff. And my baby. My baby has been eating uh, been eating a lot of the, the full-fat uh, Greek yogurt. So for sure. This morning, my family. that's what I had. Greek yogurt, yeah. uh, blueberries, honey, uh, some like, uh, what is it? Cocao with that like, mushrooms powder and stuff like that. Mm. Oh, all the rage, buddy. All the all rage. Superfoods. <laughs> superfoods. Lion's mane, cordyceps, doing all that. Brain fog, be gone. That's the plan. I've been getting a lot of brain fog. Everyone's like, he's got CTE. <laughs> uh, just real quick before Jim joins us, this one made me laugh. I saw this one. It was all over the news this morning. A new study suggests that men have a better sense of direction than women. I'm like, you do not need to spend a lot of money paying it to scientists, <laughs> doing a survey, okay? Men have better senses of direction than men. <laughs> That's it. Plain and simple. I found it I found it interesting the the way they they brought up this study because they said that back in the day like the the what people assumed was that men were better with directions because as hunters we would have to go further away from the home while women would gather closer to the home which would make them worse with directions. They found that's not even true. Women can go further, they just get lost. They get lost yeah. like crazy. No no no. So so Rebecca moved from Australia. And we lived in a small town called Clitheroe. We had this house, and there's like a, a convenience store chain called Spar. And uh, the Spar was around like three corners. She would get lost multiple times on the way to the Spar. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm like, Jesus, wheeze, Rebecca. She gets lost. Women's directions are terrible. Uh, granted, I think women are better than men at many, many things, you know? Um, not many, many things. A Cooking, things. cleaning, making babies. Yeah, oh, we get it. Oh, what was Sean Strickland's <laughs> T-shirt? A woman uh, in every kitchen and a gun in every hand. I mean, he never stops for a second, does he? Like, just trying to put forward this persona. I don't think it's a persona. Um, but, um, no, so Rebecca got her 23 and me done, you know, the DNA stuff. And it came back that she was like 10% Neanderthal. And she looked up qualities of Neanderthals. Neanderthals throughout history, apparently, were known for having terrible sense of direction. I don't know how they know this. I'm sure they were doing surveys in their time. But it's like, yeah, no shit, 100%. You're definitely Neanderthal. She gets lost everywhere. <laughs> this is anti-Neanderthal propaganda. You know, the, the yeah. what do they say? Winners write the history books. So that's what that's all about. <laughs> Ryan, have you got anything to add on this conversation while we're filling and waiting for the one and only A10 Jim Miller to join us? Um, I know that the, one of the reasons why they speculated one of the reasons why Ozzy Osbourne has survived so long doing so many drugs is because he has an uh, like an in, in, inordinate amount of Neanderthal DNA in his his. Oh, body. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the doctor who was looking at it was like, "Oh, that might have something to do why you, you survived the '80s." Ah, oh, Ozzy Osbourne, what a legend he is! Oh, he is He's... one of the funniest <laughs> human beings. He's, He's still scuff, scuttling around occasionally. <laughs> yeah, he does scuttle. He does scuttle. <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously, you know, Black Sabbath, some great music as well. Uh, but, you know, he's just funny as hell. What was that? What did he do recently? Was he uh, singing at a basket baseball game or something? Oh, that was like two, two three years ago, right? Yeah. What was it? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it was, it was atrocious. It was so bad. So yeah. bad. He was hammer I did, drunk. Yeah, no, Ozzy Osbourne. I've read his book. Have you read his? Have you read his book? Yeah, I was. I'm. I'm like a huge Ozzy fan growing up. Yeah. So I have like he turned seventy five yesterday. Yeah, well, seventy five. He looks about ninety five. Let's be honest. <laughs> you know, well, speaking of that, it's kind of on that tone. This morning on the news, check this out. Oh, there he is. Uh, we'll, we'll pick up that conversation <laughs> later because we are joined. By the one and only Jim A. T. Miller, UFC 100, UFC 200, now UFC 300. But before we get to all of that, how the bloody hell are you, Jim? I'm good. I'm good. I thought you were talking about me saying I look like I'm 95 or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were talking about Ozzy Osbourne. He's 75. He looks about 95. Yeah. We, don't, we were just saying we don't know how that man's still alive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't know how you're still alive, Jim. What is that? 
43 fights in the UFC now? Uh, yeah, 43 in the UFC, yep. Yeah. Saturday night, you looked phenomenal, mate. Uh, let's just talk about that really quick. I thought that was one of your best performances against a really good opponent. The striking was beautiful. Leg kicks were on point. Of course, you got the finish in round three. Uh, yeah, talk to me about that fight in general. Um, you know, uh, I, I knew what to expect. Um, you know, uh, I, I had basically a full camp for Gabriel, uh, you know, um, a year prior. And uh, unfortunately, he, he pulled out of that fight. Um, so, like, I, I knew it was, what it was going to be like going in. I had done the, done the prep for him. I had, uh, you know, watched tape on him and stuff. And, and I knew he was a tough dude. I knew he, he threw good straight punches, hard leg kicks. Um, I just, uh, you know, like, uh, when, when you fight with somebody that, you know, he's going to kick you, like, I, I find that the best way to prevent them from kicking you is to kick them back. <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, make them pay for every one of those leg kicks that he threw. So that was kind of the goal. And, and, uh, you know, I, um, I didn't want to get, uh, you know, I didn't want to rush anything, uh, on, on the ground, knowing that I would have an advantage there. So. Um, I kind of just dominated that position in the second round and, and was just, uh, I was waiting for my opportunity, but I wouldn't want to force anything, uh, and, and fatigue myself. And yeah, the, the opportunity yeah. came to third and was able to get the submission. Did you happen to see him afterwards? Cause I was saying on commentary, yep. I said, I don't think this guy's going to be walking tomorrow because his <laughs> lead leg was chewed up. It was black mm. and blue. Dean Thomas said, you should have gone to the calf instead of the thigh. I'm mm. like, yeah, but Jim, Jim Miller's an old school guy. Only these new school dorks do the calf kicks. Jim kicks the thigh like a real man. Well, I do kick the I do kick the calf. I, know. I do. You know, know. The, the thing is, I find, uh, you know, even though Dustin uh, is a southpaw as well, and we ended up getting into that that calf kick battle, um, I personally find as a lefty, I like to kick righties to the calf a bit more on the inside, as opposed to going to the outside. Um, I just find that it's easier. Uh, for my opponent to check uh, that that calf kick when you're going to the mm -hmm. outside. So um, yeah, you know, uh, you know, D can D can say all he wants, not being the one throwing the calf kick. You know, because like it it hurts both guys, right? So it's uh, it's kind of that uh, you got to give a little to to take a little type strike. So yeah. um, it's it's always there. It's in my head, you know, that that I could do it, but uh, it it hurts. <laughs> Yeah, no, it bloody hurts. It bloody hurts. Uh, right, so another sensational win. You know, it's just another day at the office for you at this stage. I'm joking, of course. Uh, <laughs> UFC 300 on the microphone. Yep. There was talks of Brock Lesnar. There was talks mm -hmm. of Matt Brown. That one caught me by surprise. There was talks of Paul Felder. And now, mm -hmm. as everybody knows, you're taking on Bobby Green at mm -hmm. UFC 300. Uh, how did this fight come about? And uh, yeah, tell me how you're feeling about this. Uh, you know, it, it came about really fast. Um, just the other day, I. I I was, I was actually, uh, went for a walk. We had gotten some snow. So I went for a walk with my son and, uh, all of a sudden my phone starts blowing up in my pocket and I'm like, uh, I gotta have to take this one, buddy. <laughs> so yeah, I, I ended up getting a call from Sean and, you know, Dana and Hunter were there and, and they just said, Hey, Bobby green 300. What do you think? And, uh, you know, initially I was like, ah, not, you know, not again. Right. Cause I've, I've had three opportunities. Um, you know, three, three booked fights with Bobby so far. Like this, oh, is, really? this is, yeah, this is, this, this fight's a decade in the making. Um, you know, so, uh, we almost fought in 2014. He ended up hurting himself a couple weeks out. I fought Yancey, um, uh, you know, on two weeks notice, uh, we were supposed to fight in early 2021. He had a bad weight cut, uh, fight ended up getting scrapped, you know, day before the fight. Um, and then I was supposed to fight him again in 2022 one or another thing came up. Uh, he got pulled from the card. Uh, you know, unfortunately I was able to, uh, to fight Donald, uh, and, and take the, uh, you know, the all time, uh, win list, you know, uh, number yeah. from him. So, uh, and, that, and that's the way to do that, by the way, yeah, the exactly. Right? It. Not just right? to yeah. do it by yeah, the yeah. else. Actually yeah. beat the guy with the record. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we were tied up and it was like, man, this, this doesn't can't work any better, you know? So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, this, the, the fight with Bobby was like, ah, like, uh, hopefully he doesn't screw up my opportunity at 300 here, you know, like it, it, it's, it's, you know, shit happens. Um, so I'm, I'm not expecting anything like that to happen, you know? So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a fight that I've prepared for, for six months, 
you know, uh, out of my, out of my life. Like I've, I've had three full training camps for Bobby green. Um, so it is a really easy one to take. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a, a very difficult puzzle. He's very unique stylistically. Um, so, you know, it, it is kind of that little bit of a different thing. Cause there's, there's nobody that fights like Bobby green does. Um, but like I said, I've, I've had, uh, I've had six months preparation through the years to fight Bobby. So it was, it was a no brainer. Yeah. And I guess in some ways that kind of doesn't make it easy, but it ter- certainly, you haven't got to do the research. You haven't mm-hmm. got to do homework. You got to, I'm going to figure out a style and all this kind of thing, because as you said, three camps, pretty much you're mm-hmm. in shape. You just made weight. Uh, April, what is it, 18th? 13th. April 13th, pardon me. Yep. Pardon me, yep. April 13th. Um, yeah, just go out there and have some fun. I mean, Bobby's a fun guy, you know. So yeah, oh, yeah. Fun fight. Obviously, that didn't go his way with Jalen Turner. But mm-hmm. what was your initial thoughts? So so they said, uh, Bobby Green, you were happy. You were like, it, let's go. I mean, because I know you wanted Matt Brown. You wanted a, you wanted to take out another man with the record. Uh, yeah, you know, like the the Matt Brown fight really intrigued me. Uh, you know, there's there's something about uh, also like stepping up in a weight class and um, you know going going after somebody who's a who's a legend at one seventies. Um, but yeah, like you know, uh, the Bobby Green's ranked. He's he's ranked yeah. number fourteen. So it's like here's uh, here's my opportunity to get to get back on that list and uh, you know. Uh, fight at 300 and, and continue, you know, on with the, the career and the goals. Yeah. So, so the career isn't going to be over at UFC 300. Right? Nope, that's, that's not win, the plan. <laughs> we know or lose. I mean, it's, it's inspirational. I said that Saturday night. Now I'm going to get my producer to ask this next question. I'll bring up this topic because, uh, Harrington, are you there, buddy? Maybe he's gone off oh. and he's treating the baby. Oh, he's there. He's <laughs> oh, there. I'm here. Wait, he put something in the notes, Jim. Right. Okay. And I said. Th- I said this was a conversation from a while ago. He said, "No, no, 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 no. It's resurfaced." Harrington, take it away. So uh, Daniel Cormier uh, mm-hmm. saw your comments uh, from your post by presser the other day. Uh, you know about how you guys had the same record after mm-hmm. 15 fights in the UFC, but you've now got about three times as many uh, fights in the UFC. Uh, and he said, uh, "You know, essentially, um, if." We let guys in uh, for having a record, you know, for for the most wins and that win, you know, that record then gets broken down the line. What are we doing here? Uh, so that was uh, that, that was his response. Uh, you know, and, and like I've said plenty of times, he's entitled to his own opinion. Um, you know, that is a uh, kind of a silly, uh, silly statement because it's like uh, that means that guys in baseball that had, you know, uh, the the home run lead, uh you know we're home run leaders or or hit leaders or uh stolen bases leaders it's like the, well you can't let them in because they've they've got the they've got the record now and it you know sammy sosa might come around one day and be juiced out of his gills and and you know take uh babe Ruth's record it's yeah. uh it that's a weird argument but listen my my goal is to keep fighting, keep doing what I'm doing. And, you know, I'm getting a UFC 300. So the, the new goal at this point is to win over Daniel Cormier. No, and I will not. I will not <laughs> stop. I will yeah. not stop. I'll, I'll, uh, you know, I took Russian in high school. Maybe I, maybe I gotta, maybe I gotta take that back up so I can, you know, uh, uh, talk like some of the guys that he trains with at AKA. Right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, my, my goal from this point forward, is to win over Daniel Cormier. Fried chicken. That's all you're going to do. About <laughs> that cake and chicken. I mean, I've never seen a man eat so much <laughs> food whilst commentating. And, and and obviously eating and talking at the same time is, is not an easy thing to do. No, but no. But if anyone can do it, it's DC. Um, now, I'm not just trying to agree with you because you're a guest on the show, but I've said this publicly a few times. I don't think being a champion necessarily means you get into the hall of fame because otherwise that almost means the prerequisite is to be a champion and therefore every champion gets in the hall of fame i'm not kissing your ass you i think you got to make a difference in this sport you've got to make an impact you got to leave a mark you know having the most wins that's just one of your records you know i mean mm. if i look at your wikipedia page i mean you'll know them more than me i mean you've got many <laughs> many records so mm. and i think everyone would agree 
So, uh, so you disagree with DC? Uh, you know, uh, it's it's not that I disagree with them, right? It's more so that like I'm not even entering that conversation. You know, that the more he talks about it, <laughs> the more good press for me. Because yeah, as I continue on through my career, uh, people are just going to come over to my side. Uh, if I get another couple more fights, they're just coming over to my side. They're not, they're not going to his. So, you know, like as I continue on with the legacy, with, with the career and the, and the stats, um, he can talk about me all he wants, you know? So, uh, you know, fortunately it's bring up the food. Like I'm pretty good in the kitchen. So I think I got, it. <laughs> well, well <yeah. laughs> you know, he's, I, I, I've, I've been known to make some decent Creole food too. So, oh, so nice. maybe, I'll, maybe I'll, maybe I'll really go after his, you know, his heartstrings. There you go. Just bring him a plate of some gumbo or something <laughs> like that. Go. He'll, yep, he'll yeah. be a happy man. You know, it's funny you say that because on Monday, uh, me and Anthony were doing the show. And, you know, as you know, we reached out and uh, we said, Jim's off doing something wholesome. He's not looking at social media. <laughs> he's come back. He's with the kids. He's having good old fashioned family time. He's probably out there chopping wood, hunting, things like that. What did you do when you got back victorious once again? Uh, ex exactly that, right? You know, got, got back into you know, home life, which is, uh, pretty laid back for me. And, and, you know, the kids are, they're doing all their sports and stuff like that. So we're still running around with that. And, uh, yeah, it's stoking the, stoking the wood stove and, and yeah. chopping some firewood and, uh, yeah, we just, go. uh, just living the life, right. Living yeah. the dream. <laughs> I, I've got, I've got your accomplishments up here and I'll say them. So, uh, it was here. Fight of the night seven times, most wins, performance of the night five times, submission of the night three times, most wins in UFC history, most wins in UFC lightweight division, uh, most bouts in UFC history, most bouts in the UFC, it's repeating them twice, second most finishes in UFC history, most finishes in the lightweight division, tied Charles Oliveira for the most submission wins in UFC lightweight division, on and on and on. Now, when we look at your storied career, Jim, you know, some of the victories that you've had, they're, they're very impressive. And Charles Oliveira is one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, of all the names that you've been in there with, I mean, Donald Cerrone, that was a great performance. Clay Guida, hold on. Charles, you beat Charles Oliveira, though, didn't you, yep. one time? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. because I just saw a loss on there. What is your most satisfying victory in the UFC or fight, win or lose? Um, I, don't, I don't know. You, you know, that's a... That, they're all they're all satisfying, you know. Right when it happens, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, uh, you know, it, it, I I thoroughly enjoy the lifestyle, the training, uh, you know, and and being in the gym and and bettering myself every day. But man, so it's a even as a young kid, it was a, it was a drag sometimes. Like you're just beating the tar out of yourself day in day out. So so anytime you go in there and you perform well, it's like. Fuck yeah, you know, like that all the all the paid off. Um yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know what's the what's the most satisfying or my favorite. They they're all they're all important, you know, yeah. on on the you know, in the grand scheme of things. Um, you know, honestly, I can still it, it wasn't my favorite fight to be in because it was absolutely exhausting. Uh but my first fight with Joe Lozon. I can still hear the crowd in between rounds. So like and that, what were that, they doing? Booing, uh, cheering? They were screaming their heads off. You know, it was uh yeah, I can I can still hear it. So it's uh that one definitely left the mark on me in more ways than one. Uh, you know, got a little beat up in that fight too. But uh yeah, like that uh I wouldn't say it was like my best performance or the most satisfying win, but but yeah, it was just uh it's one that I think uh I'm always going to come back to as mm. like, um, you know, one of those fights that I was really proud of. Did you wrestle at high school? Yes. College? Uh, one year in college. Yeah. One year in college. So you've been wrestling, you've been putting your body through it for a long time. You're 40 mm -hmm. years old now. Yep. Most wins in the UFC, most fights, sorry, pardon me. And most wins, right? I think, mm -hmm. yep. um, but there you go. Um, my body's destroyed. I'm only four years older than you. My mm. neck, I'm in pain all the time. I've got two total knee replacements. Everyone knows about the one eye. My wrist mm -hmm. is buggered. It goes on and on and on, right? Your body, it, I'm very interested to know, like, your recovery protocol and what you do because one thing that I regret was after every training session, I never really stretched. Mm. So that's, like, something that I'm trying to undo now. 
you know, I spent about 45 minutes today having a really good stretch after my mm. workout. Talk to me about your recovery protocol and how you manage to still do this, you know, at, at, at a senior age for a professional <laughs> athlete. Politely. <laughs> yeah. As an old bastard in the sport. Yeah, yeah there you are. <laughs> uh, you know, um, I honestly, I think it's the lifestyle, right? Like, I, I don't... Uh, I don't, I don't, uh, like fall into some of the same traps that, that, uh, you know, some of our peers fall into. Like I, I'm not, I'm not in front of a computer screen or TV screen or my phone all day. Uh, cause I like, you know, I mean, I, I talked to Max Holloway the one time when we were signing posters, he's like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a streamer that also fights in the octagon. You know, it's like, like you're, you're making money outside, you know, fighting, uh, doing it. So great, you know, awesome for you, but I just, I just yeah. can't do it. Um, so like I, I eat good food, right? I like, I, I try to, I try to eat as good a food as I can, as clean a food as I can. That takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. Um, I try to grow or, you know, hunt as much as I can. Um, I really try to get that eight hours of sleep. That's, that's something that I've been big on the last couple of years now. Um, it's, it's a performance enhancer. It honestly is. I mean, I was a, I was like a five or six hour a night kind of guy. I still, if I get five hours of sleep, I wake up and I'm ready to go. But then it's, it starts to catch up to me. Those injuries don't heal, right? Two good nights of sleep in a row. And like, it doesn't matter if I, I, my, my neck's banged up, my back's banged up, my shoulders, uh, like two or three good nights sleep. And, and those, those injuries fade away and fade, fade back into, you know, uh, the, the background. Um, but yeah, there's, there's nothing super crazy, you know, like I, I was doing some ice baths for a bit. It's one of those things I, I feel it helps with the bruising, but it's not like anything, uh, that I find helping with like the, the joint issues and, and other stuff. But, uh, yeah, I just try not to eat processed crap, you know, like <laughs> yeah, the processed crap. I mean, it's yeah. ridiculous, isn't it? the amount yeah. of chemicals we're, we're just, I mean, I, I wasn't always like that, but just recently we're doing that whole thing. We're trying mm -hmm. to move to a different part of the country where we've got land mm -hmm. where we can grow our own yes. vegetables and yes. cows and stuff like it's that. It's a good that's life, Daniel. That's what it's we're turning into. You know what I mean? That's yeah. what we're leaving California yeah. and we're getting into like, that stuff. On. You know, yeah. it's a good... So you're, you, you're still in New Jersey, Brunswick? Yes. Is that right? No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm, I'm way far away from Brunswick. I'm in uh, a little town called Stillwater, named after a swamp. I think I kind of live in it. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah like i'm i'm right next to the uh uh like appalachian trail i'm on the western side of the state oh nice sounds yeah. beautiful yeah how cold as hell right now yeah it's pretty cold right now yeah we're, it's it's uh it's not too warm out there 20 yeah, yeah, 20 yeah. degrees do you keep up with the fire stream are you a fan of the sport or because some people aren't and, and that always kind of surprises me but do you do you follow it pretty closely i i do follow it i don't catch every fight you know, on every pay-per-view, um, I'm, I'm more of a, you know, I'll catch highlight type stuff. If there's a, if there's a fight that I really want to see, I, I will make a point of watching it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, I, I I'm not, I, I definitely don't stay up, you know, and go to Buffalo Wild Wings to watch all the, all the cards, but, uh, yeah, you I, I am. And you're on the East Coast. Yeah. 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 They're, they're light. They're light. Um, yeah. I hear though, a little rumor, you might be making your desk debut is this correct oh yeah no I, you know what i i, I don't know uh, paul felder said something i don't know maybe I'm. you wrong. know i threw it out there i threw it out there you, you can't uh you know if you you can't get things you don't ask for you know so uh we'll see we'll see how it yeah. goes I, i'd have to keep the swearing down to a to a minimum i think <laughs> oh you, you haven't sworn once on here I, i'm the foul mouth uh oh. the reason i ask you about the fights is because this weekend in toronto obviously drinks duplessis sean mm -hmm. strickland have you got any thoughts on that fight uh, I think it's an intriguing one. You know, um, Sean se seems to have like, I don't know. He's, he's hit this, this growth period where he's just, he's just looking great. I mean, like when he beat Israel, it was, uh, it caught me off guard. It, it really did. Um, you know, and, and, uh, DDP is, he's a, he's a great, well-rounded fighter as well. Um, you know, I, I, <laughs> I try not to get caught up in all the all the 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 banter back and forth. That's like, a good way. That's that's a know. polite word. The banter, the bullshit, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the bullshit. shit talk, <laughs> the yeah. craziness. 
Yeah, it it, uh, it that seems to be just all what it what it's about. And, and you know, like I fell in love with the sport of MMA for what happened inside the inside the cage or the ring, right? Like I was watching the early UFCs, the and and Pride and, and all that stuff, and it's like. <laughs> Half the guys over in Pride didn't speak a lick of English, so you you couldn't understand them anyway, or at least I couldn't. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to watch the fight. So I'm interested in the fight. I think uh, I think Sean, if he can keep it keep it up and standing, I think he he uh, outstrikes him. Um, but I, you know, it's a it's a tough one. But uh, yeah, like a. The other stuff, yeah, I don't, I don't need yeah, the, yeah, I don't yeah, need yeah, all yeah. the chirping. <laughs> it, it, it's funny that you mentioned pride there because when I first started, when I first discovered what mixed martial arts was, mm. I started watching Pride, and I was mm-hmm. just obsessed. I couldn't believe it, and I remember watching the two thousand was it two thousand four or two thousand five Grand Prix where Shogun who uh, won it. Did we were, were you watching back yeah. then? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Who was yeah. your favorite fighter back in Pride? Because I Sho- even though I, I fought him. <laughs> Vandalay Silva was my, one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. I think he's a bit of a dickhead these days. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but he was one of my favorites. Shogun, of course. Right? Yeah. It, it, it was some uh, crazy fights back then. Yeah, yeah. I was always a big fan of Shogun. Uh, yeah, Vanderlei was always high on my list and, and Fedor as well. Yeah, yeah, just the absolute violence. All right, well, listen, Jim, thanks for joining us. Uh, Bobby Green, it's unbelievable yep. what you've done, man. It really is. Thank UFC you. 100, 200, and 300. Congratulations on a great Thanks, career. Mike. Congratulations on Saturday. Thanks for your time again today. And uh, we'll let you get back to, you know, making the world a better place, chopping down trees, <laughs> growing free range <laughs> vegetables, give, donating to charities. Is there anything this man can't do? <laughs> Win over Thank DC. You. That's, that's, that's yeah, what. Oh, that's, there you go. The there thing. you go. Yeah. We're going to do get it. get that gumbo we're cooking. Gonna, we're going to do it. Yep. All right, buddy. <laughs> Thanks again. Take care. Go, Mike. All right, today's episode is brought to you by Eight Sleep. And let me tell you right now, I love this product, okay? And you will love it too. If you give it a try, you will not be disappointed. The high-tech solution to your age-old sleeping issues is here, provided by Eight Sleep's pod cover. It's a cover which slips right over the mattress and it lets you heat it or cool it on either side of the bed, okay? In my house, it's fixed a big problem, right? I was always too hot. Rebecca's always too cold, right? You can set it as low as 55 degrees on your side. And if you're a mental patient like my wife, you could have it as high as 110 degrees on the other side. I don't know why you would want it 110 degrees, but hey, you know, whatever floats your boat. So you will sleep fantastically, okay? Sleep science has shown that in order to get your best sleep, the body temperature needs to drop in the early and the middle part of the sleep, and then it needs to rise in the morning. The pod cover will improve your sleep by automatically adjusting your bed's temperature based on your individual needs. As I said, it covers, sorry, it can be added to any bed like a fitted sheet and allows you and your partner to cool it or warm it. In addition to keeping you at the perfect temperature all night, the pod also tracks your sleep and health metrics. And on average, pod users see their sleep quality improve by 32% after just a month on the pod. And what did uh, Jim Miller say? Sleep. He said that really is a super tool in becoming a superhuman. Great sleep is so underrated, and this will improve that leaps and bounds. By the way, in addition to keeping you at the perfect temperature all night, the pod also tracks your sleep and your health metrics. On average, pod users see their sleep improve by 32%. I think I already said that one time already, but it is worth re-mentioning. So there's no better way to improve your sleep than to try out the Eight Sleeps Pod 3. Okay, give this thing a try. You will absolutely love it. It's phenomenal. It's incredible technology. Give it a shot and get $200 off. Go to 8sleep.com slash Bisping, E-I-G-H-T, sleep.com slash Bisping to get $200 off. Give it a try. You will love this thing, and you will thank me later. Harrington, join me, yes, please. Sir. Is there a better human being than Jim Miller? Dude, you'd be hard-pressed to find one. Hard to find. I'm telling you. <laughs> what a guy. What a. We said that on Monday. We were joking. Saying he's probably out there doing something wholesome. And sure <laughs> enough, yes, he was. Um, that's interesting that he's trained for Bobby Green three times. You know, he just had a, I, I would say, a hard fight. 
But even those fights like that, he got to round three before he got the submission. You're still and throwing kicks. Anytime you throw a kick and you, when you just land on somebody, it still hurts you. Sometimes you can kick an elbow, you break little metatarsals in the foot or things like that. There's still a tremendous amount of impact on Jim's body. What all he's going to do? Rest up, you know, jump in that ice bath maybe once or twice and off he pops. UFC 300, let's go. Uh, we've got a few minutes before Alexander the Rocket Rackage joins us. Harrington, throw me a subject. All right. Well, uh, since we, we just had Jim Miller uh, talking about UFC 300, we're about to have Alexander Rackage talking about UFC 300. I figured this one made the most sense. Tom Aspinall says that he uh, would welcome a fight at UFC 300 against Alex Pereira if, if that's what Pereira wants to do. But he's making it clear that he's not a weight bully and he's not calling him out. But if Pereira makes that challenge, he would accept it. Well, I'm like, listen, of course Tom fancies that. You can't go and bully someone and say, I'm not a bully. You know what I mean? That's like saying, um, that's like saying, no disrespect, but go f yourself. Do you know what I mean? Or, and then continue to disrespect them. No. Um, do you know what? Tom said this back in New York. He said, just the way that Pereira was looking at, you know, he, he wants it. And I think Pereira said that he would fancy it, right? Over the last couple of months or whatever it's been. Uh, don't think that's going to happen. But I'll tell you what, would you be intrigued? Would you be intrigued? I mean, I could not think of a more fitting thing for UFC 300 than somebody attempting to become a three-weight division champion for the first time in UFC history. So it, just for storyline alone, yeah. And I mean, obviously, anytime Tom Aspinall steps in, I'm intrigued. Anytime Alex Pereira steps in, I'm intrigued. I mean, yeah. It, I don't know. It seems to make the most sense, especially given the gaping hole we have. I mean, this is a stack card, what we have so far, but that top of the card could use a little bit of spice. Well, let me tell you this, because a lot of people, and by the way, listen, yeah, take my money. I'd love to see it. It wouldn't last long. That's no disrespect to Pereira. Tom Aspinall's a smart guy. He knocked out Sergei Pavlovich. He's a finishing machine. He can also wrestle like a maniac. Okay, he'd take it down. I think he'd ball him pretty easy, just with the size and the strength. Tom Aspinall's gigantic. But changing subject slightly on that, right? People, I see it on Twitter, people are bitching about UFC 300. And I think they're out of the mind. And you know, when Data did these announcements, they're like, oh, what's this? What's this? We're waiting for this big announcement. I mean, every single one of these fights could be a main event. Jim Miller, and don't start with the company man bullshit. This is facts, right? Jim Miller, Bobby Green, on a fight night, that's a main event and a sensational fight. Former champ, Figueredo, taking on former champ, Cody Garbrandt. Brilliant. Bo Nickel, one of the brightest prospects in all of combat sports, taking on Cody Brundage, which is the next logical matchup for him. You know, it's a step up the totem pole on the pecking order. Calvin Cater, fan favorite at Featherweight, former champion Aljamain Sterling moving up a weight class. Brilliant fight, intriguing fight. Yuri Prohaska, former champion, taking on one of the top light heavyweights who's returning his last fight. He fought former champion Jan Blachowicz, Rakic joining us in just a second. Number one contender matchup at uh, 155 pounds, former champion Charles Oliveira taking an arm and saw Rukian. Tell me that's not a ridiculous fight. Justin Gagey versus Max Holloway for the BMF belt. We haven't even spoke about that. We didn't talk about no. that on Monday, did we? Why is no, that no, not no. in the notes, Harrington? It's the first thing in the notes. But why didn't you bring it up sooner? <laughs> we'll get into that in a minute. I can't believe. It. No, it's not. I don't think it is. Uh, and then, of course, Zhang Wei Li taking on Yan Zhao Nan. But never mind that. Look at this. Look at this. It's been a long time since we've spoken, my brother. How are you doing, Alexander? I'm good. I'm good, my brother. Long time no see. Happy to see long, you. Long time no see, indeed. Uh, indeed. Last time we did see you was against Jan Blahovic, right, in the octagon, of course. You yeah. blew your knee out. What was the injury there? Uh, completely ACL uh, torn uh, and menisc. Right. Oh, shit. Oh, well. Well, you're back. Uh, you're, you're better. You're healed. You're rested. You're hungry. You're in Vienna right now? Yes. So, better than ever. That's, that's where you live, Vienna? Yes, yes, I live in Vienna. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm born there. I, I live there. I train there. Uh, yeah, I'm nice. being overseas as well to train, 
uh, a, a lot of places training, you know. But uh, yeah, I have a very good trainers here. Sparring partner is gonna come. So yeah, nice. So what have you been doing since we last saw you? I mean, I'll, we'll talk about the fight with Yuri in just a minute in your personal life. You've been good. Anything new mm-hmm. in your world? Uh, no, I mean, it was a hard time. Of course, one and a half years is not a, is not, is, is a long time. You know, I've been working on my rehab and uh, working on my skills. You know, when I was able to train again, like the boxing, kickboxing, all martial arts, and I'm pr- improving constantly. And uh, yeah, I took my time and you know, it's it's God will. You know, it needed to be happened because uh, this uh, showed me uh, my patience to be calm. You know, calmness. I think this is the one thing what was missed. You know, in my career to stay calm. You know, if we are talking like uh, like let's say uh, example before the Jan fight. You know, I was not calm. Uh, like now I I do. I believe more in myself. You know, in my in my abilities. And th- this calmness, you know, just made me a uh, better mm. fighter, better athlete. Yeah, th- that, that's what it's all about. I mean, you're only 31 years old. And it took me, I think, yes. until almost the end of my career to, to, to master this, you know, because as you yes. said, the, the calmer you are, the better you perform. You know, I always say this, when you're in a crazy, frantic state of mind, you're never the best version of yourself in anything you know, regardless of what you're doing, you know? So if you're going in fighting the best fighters on planet earth and your mind's going a million miles an hour and you're angry and you're acting out of emotion, how are you supposed to fight and beat the best martial arts on the planet? No, not possible. Yeah. No, you need to be ice cold, you know, no emotions, because if you get emotion, you know, and, and the, 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 the crowd, you know, get under your skin, the opponent gets under your skin before the media or something like that, then you already, kind of lost you know the fight because if you're yeah. emotional you don't see the details you know and you know you know it by yourself one small wrong step one uh inch you know shorter and the fight is over yeah no absolutely so we're gonna try and get you mad now though we're gonna try and bring back the old alexander <laughs> back come on buddy we need a bit of shit talk because normally on, on mondays we have anthony smith on here right yeah and anthony yes. said to ask you about Yuri Prohashka. He said, because Alex says, and this is not my words, Yuri, if you see this, this is Anthony Smith. I am merely a vessel. Yes. Right? Yes. He said, this. Alex says that this whole martial artist thing is bullshit and, 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 and you'll tell us all about it. He said, you don't like Yuri <clears throat> one little bit. Oh, he is a fake samurai. <laughs> He's fake. Oh, come on. <laughs> no. No, honestly, I believe, uh, you know, he's living this uh, this uh, thing, samurai uh, thing, like, for a couple of years right now, and he's building, you know, UFC loves this shit, you know, to, to see him like a samurai going with a sword, training, you know, hitting the tree and this and that. It's good, man. A couple of years ago, you know, you, you didn't know about the, you know, you know how he became samurai? His coach gave him a book, and he wrote a book, like, 50 pages and then he became a samurai you know man are you joking or what stay real you know and oh, it's okay you know i can also uh, they call me rocket but uh, you know i i'm not i'm not uh, living like a rocket you know i'm i'm not like in the in the lab i don't not like putting something on my you know what i mean you know i don't believe this you know honestly i don't believe it He's a great athlete, and uh, maybe he found this uh, thing for himself that worked out very good. Maybe he needs also to be more calm because uh, probably he was not calm at a young age. Uh, mm. That's what I hear, you know, some some bar fights, hooligans, that and this and that. Because you know, you need to you need to think we are living not far from each other. Yeah, we are like living two hours by car, you know. It's like maybe from Los Angeles until uh, from Los Angeles and Vegas. It's, it's this, yeah. this amount, you know. Manchester so, to Birmingham is nothing. Yeah, or or yeah, and and you know you have some friends, you know, and from them the friends are talking, you know. I hear about that, you know. Nothing, you know. I only hear things. I don't nothing if, if it's hundred percent, but uh, you know, those stories don't came up like normal. 
Yeah, so, so it was Anthony that told me to ask that. To be fair, and I don't know, but I, I think a lot of mixed martial artists, I mean, I was kind of wild when I was younger. Anthony Smith was. He's very been very open about that. And and Yuri, I, I think he's even told us. I think he told us once at fighting yeah. meetings when, when he was younger, you know, like some some crazy wild street fights and things like that, you know. He's living in the Czech Republic, bro. <laughs> that's, that's a tough place. Um, yes, it is. But we, yes. we all we all grow as people. Yeah, I mean, like like you said, now hundred percent. I I myself, I was also in the park in in the streets. You know, I fought my ass off. You know, there I had also my my things. You know, but uh, sport saved my life. You know, sport uh, saved uh, me from. Uh, you know, I grew up in Vienna, not the best place where a lot of crime is, drugs. You know. Uh, gangs blah 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 mm. so you know but you know coming back for the samurai thing you know probably he found his way to calm down to get away you know and and to not be like uh, aggressive like he used to be uh that's good for him but uh let it be for him don't uh, publish so much you know it's getting i'm getting tired of this is is there a little bit of tension between you two i'm kind of sensing a little bit uh yeah, it could be, you know. We are just figuring out who the king of Europe is. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh so yeah, it will be a very good fight because he's a very competitive actor attractive fighter, you know, with a lot of hype on it. Uh very unique style, you know, and even the look, you know. Mm. So he's it's like to see. And uh yeah, after Jan pulled out, you know, for me it was only one name. Uh, that I want to fight, and that's Yuri Prohaska. Yeah, yeah, and it makes sense, and it's a huge fight card, and it's great to have you back, Alex. I, I love watching you, you fight. Th th Thank that, you. It, it was a knee injury to Jan Blachowicz. Other than that, you've only got one loss in the UFC. So, yeah. do you think... And this was, this was split decision. They robbed me. The bastards. The judges they did it again. Me. I guess but Volkan you know, Uzdemir. You know, like Dana said, never leave it to the judges, that he is 100% true, you know. But if I rewatch the fight, you are. But, you know, anyways, two losses in UFC. One, I got dropped. One, I got injured. Mm. You know, if I can decide to, to lose uh, away, to, if I can decide how I want to lose, I would never going to choose to be injured. But if they give me a loss, only robbery, you know. So basically, <laughs> I am unbeaten in the UFC. <laughs> Nobody yeah, beat yeah. me. All right, there it is. <laughs> Alex, the unbeaten racket. You got you to gotta change the name. Yeah, true. <laughs> Alex, the unbeaten. Couple more years. They say never let it go to the judges. Nobody's yes. letting it go to the judges. We're all trying to finish our opponents. It's just hard when you're fighting really good guys. Uh, real quick cool. before we talk about your approach, what do you think of Yuri's performance? Per performance, performance against performance. Uh, Pereira back in uh, Madison Square Garden. <laughs> uh, honestly, until he got knocked out. For me, he was winning the fight. You know, the first good first round. You know, he took him down. He took some calf kicks. He do come, took some. But uh, you know, with Alex, he's very experienced. You know, and he kept calm. He didn't panic. You know, even he came into the second round knowing that he lost the first. He didn't panic. You know, and that shows you how experienced this guy is. So, like I said, until the finish, for me, was Yuri the better man. But, uh, you know, like I said before, one small inch, one small step, one small wrong, uh, mm -hmm. one thing, and then this. So in the, when the fight got ended, I was, like, surprised because I thought it's, gonna, it's, it's an early stoppage because Yuri came up really fast after he landed on the, on, the, on, the, on the ground and Alex over him on the mount, I think. So for me, it was a little bit early, but then later on, Yiri uh, said on his social medias that uh, it was okay. So when he says okay, then for me, this is over, you know. I, I think everybody did. I was there in the crowd and I remember thinking, whoa, like Mark Goddard is, is, is an old friend of mine. And I was like, yeah, oh, that was a bad stoppage. But then uh, Yiri came out and he was like, no, I was out. And I thought that yeah. was very honorable. And that yeah. is something that maybe. A samurai would do. <laughs> <laughs> you were always bringing that, you know. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> no, he was, you know, hats off. He was like honest, you know. He 
he he said that you know i don't know if i would say that in that in that in that uh mm. situation right now but maybe he said that in the cage you know after he get knocked out you know he still not remember anything but later on on the social media he told us again you know so he was like honest and uh, yeah like i like yeah it was yeah. A, like he he will come back 100% He's still young, you know, he's the same age like me. So I think we're going to be in the top for a while, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Magomed Ankalaev have got a big win at the weekend. Looks yeah. phenomenal against Johnny Walker. Uh, looks like he's probably going to face Pereira next. What do you think about that? Very good fight for, I mean, very good fight for the division. Ankalaev looked uh, good, you know. First round, you can give it Walker, you know. You could, you know, but w- I think Walker was thinking to, 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 with his style, the axe kicks and the spinning back kicks and the capoeira shit to, to, to put uh, Magomed out of balance, you know, to get emotional. But you can't do it with uh, Magomed, you know, he's also an experienced guy. But, you know, I was a little bit uh, sad about the performance of, of uh, Walker. He, I think he didn't even throw one right proper right hand you know and mm. so probably he's gonna fight uh Pereira and uh, I see I see a slight advantage for Uncle Live in that fight yeah yeah so do you think if you beat Yuri Prohashka you could be next because you, your record is phenomenal as we said yeah. uh if you beat Yuri a former champion and then if Magomed beats Pereira just just playing matchmaker here who else is there? Is there anyone else that has a real it's Hill it's claim? Hill Hill is here. Hill, oh, but I, of course. Yeah, but I don't know how long he's gonna take for recovery, you know, because uh, this uh, Achilles, you know, it's it's a very serious injury. They call mm. it also career ending surgery so, uh, injury. So you never know, you know. But I think Hill will come end of this year, probably. But uh, I think I believe if I finish Yuri or put a great performance on UFC 300 with a, uh, doesn't matter if it's a finish uh, or, or a three round domination, I would be in the title picture, you know. Yeah. And of course, uh, you know, if I look good. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, you always look good, buddy. You're always fun to watch. Uh, <laughs> and I you. guess we'll see how all of that stuff plays out. For people that don't know you, Alex. Talk to us, you know, where did you grow up? What was life like for you when you were younger? Give us a bit of your background, a bit yeah. of your story, if you don't mind. Yeah, I know, no problem. Uh, I was, I grew, uh, I, I, born in Vienna. My parents are from Serbia and I'm fighting also from Serbia. Uh, like Serbia is not far away from Austria, like five hours. I've been spent a lot of time there and I feel like a true Serbian, but I'm very, thankful that I grew up in Vienna and Austria because my parents moved when the war starts from 90 to 95, they moved to Vienna. So mm. as a kid, I was always like hi- hyperactive, you know, kid. I always searching for, for action, fights, everything. I played soccer until 13 and then uh, I was too violent in the games. So the coach kicked me out. And then there, there were a kickboxing uh, gym five minutes from our a uh, place where we live lived so i started kickboxing with 13 with 14 i had my four uh, my first match so i i did kickboxing 6 years until i was 19 i did like some 30 or 40 fights austrian champion and i did also some pro fights and then kickboxing was also too uh, too too boring for me so mma was the next thing so with 19 i switched to mma and immediately in that time, you know, 2011, there were no amateurs. So you go in right away pro, you know, you fight right away pro. Mm. So, yeah, I, I fought, I fought pro. I lost my first fight, you know, because of the lack of grappling. Then I focus on the grappling and then I put one win after the other. But growing up in Vienna, you know, you have 23 districts in Vienna. So every di- district has its own mentality, a old culture, you know. So I grew up in the 16 districts where a lot of immigrants are living, you know, like uh, mm. uh, Serbians, Croatians, Bosnians, Turks, now Arabs, you know. And, you know, 
when a lot of cultures, you know, together live, you know, there is always some trouble. So yeah. on, on daily yeah. basis, you know, I had fights. I saw someone got stabbed. I saw drug selling. I saw that and that, you know. So, you know, you don't know when you don't see it, you know. And a, a guy, maybe in America, if you see, tell him Austria, Vienna, it's beautiful culture. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it is. To me, to me, because I've never been there and I'm really yes. looking forward to going. In my mind, I think Vienna, wow, beautiful. Uh, yes. So like rich in culture and museums and classical music and stuff like that. That's the image that I have. But you're yes. saying, yeah, maybe that's there. But It's 100%. Side. You have, right, it's 100%. We have all these things, but you have always a dark side as well, you yeah. know? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like Americans. Americans think, and I say Americans, uh, uh, some people, they have this image of England that everyone's very posh and proper and, you know, yeah. very well spoken and all the rest of it. I'm like, dude, come, 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 come up North. Do you know what I mean? And even in London. And as you say, with the immigrants, I mean, listen, it's, it's a real tough situation because it's the same in the States right now and all over the world. It's a real messed up situation, but these people are yeah. desperate. You know what I mean? And, yes. hundred you know, percent. You know, and it's just desperate people do desperate shit, you know? So, True. oh dude. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you, yeah. Prohaska. Yes. How are we getting this done? What is what is the prediction for you? <clears throat> uh, I know. Honestly, I know. I know you don't want to hear this, but you know, I no, was. I want to so hear it. No, I was. I was out, you know, and uh, for a long time. And in 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 May, gonna be two. I mean, in April, almost two years that I didn't fought. So, let me talk into the cage let me talk in a cage let me talk with my fists with my kicks with my yes. elbows you know and let me show that i got better from the last fight and let me show the re rocket 3.30 3.0 please yeah no no i love that i love that because when, when was it let me just look right here it was 14th of may 2022 yeah so yeah it's gonna be two years that's a long so, time do you feel like you've got to kind of reintroduce yourself because the sport is getting bigger and bigger all the time? Yeah, I mean, I need to remind the guy, the people, you know, and the UFC who the rocket is, you know, to, to yeah. put uh, like uh, explosive kicks, uh, good wrestling, good grappling, you know, to show them that I'm the best all-rounder in the division and I truly believe that I am because I'm working hard on every aspect of the game mm -hmm. and... I don't want to mention any names, you know, in the division, but uh, there are some some really lacks uh, of, of uh, grappling, wrestling, or striking. So, and I'm a complete version. I think next to Uncle Live, he is also very complete. Me and him are the most completely guys. So that's the reason I need to show that show show this on UFC 300. And what a better better way to have a comeback on this card, man! I was so happy, and I'm so glad, and I. Thank UFC, thank Mick Maynard uh, for giving me this opportunity against a former champ, Yuri Prohaska. I'm so motivated, you know, and, you know, I want only to fight, you know, and I want only, and, you know, some people gonna, some, some people gonna say, yeah, you didn't fought for two years, you have ring rust and this, fuck that. You are gonna have ring rust if you believe it. If you don't believe it, you're not gonna have, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, that's what a lot of people say. They say it's a mental thing, and it all comes down to the amount of sparring that you do. Yes. And I'm assuming you do a lot of sparring, Alex. I I spar really hard. I love hard sparring. I spar uh, 18 ounce gloves. You know, not sometimes double shin pads. You know, um, they interesting. Really... So, so, so you can go harder. You put on huge gloves, 18 ounce, yeah. and double shin pads. Yes. I like that. Yes. I've, I've never heard of that before, but that's, it sounds obvious. Yes. I mean, for striking, for hard kicks, you know, for, for, for hard punches, you know, and if you wrestle with, with the big gloves, uh, you, you are, you have a big, you have a big thing. What you not, you can't use is your hands, you know, the grappling, but what you need to use is the other part of the, of the body, the forearms, the shoulders, mm. the hips, mm. you know, the knees. So, if you get used to wrestle and grapple with the big gloves, of course, I spar also with small gloves. But if you get used to the big gloves and then when you switch off and then you have this big tool, the hands, 
it's a it's a extra it's a extra it's an extra gift you know mm. so yeah this is my my uh thinking of, of that but well, well, well yeah you're smart because you kind of put in yourself at a handicap and then when you get the yeah. small gloves on it makes everything way easy it's like tie boxes tie boxes of course they've got the big gloves on but they they have tremendous clinch work and foot sweeps and things like that and they do all of that um as a man that's austrian that's serbian that's speaking to me in english europeans generally put the brits to shame because you speak multiple languages how many languages do you speak i feel like it's three yes it is i speak serbian i speak german and i speak uh, english but uh former yugoslavia yugoslavia had eight countries oh. so if I if I tell you that I can I understand Croatian and speak Croatian, speak Bosnian, speak Serbian, speak, uh, but it is you're just same. showing off now. <laughs> it's a, it's a, brother. It's the same language. It's like English and 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 English in in the in the states. It's just a dialect. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, three, yeah, yeah. yeah, three. Like these Viennans, they're, they're normally so humble. <laughs> <laughs> how do you, how do you say Q Harrington in Serbian? What Q? you harrington harrington's Har our producer that's what everybody says ah. when they send a question in. it's just a joke <laughs> yeah be say harrington yeah be say harrington um <laughs> serbian is i would have thought that was russian uh it's similar. similar yes yes i some words are i mean not some a lot of words are very similar and uh, uh some uh when when they talk you know some kinds i understand yeah. like uh, maybe, maybe 40%, 50%. Yeah, yeah. I, I always say I'm going to learn another language. I pick it up pretty easy, but then I never stay there for long enough or whatever. Speaking of Harrington, you're Bissar Harrington. Get on. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, was, that, was that good? Was that right? Yeah, be said. Yeah, be said. Yeah, be said. Yeah, be said. Harrington, yeah, be said. Um, do we have any questions on Twitter for the Rocket? Yeah, we have a couple, but I mean, can I just say for the, for the believers out there, send that in. Dude, just hit me with that. I won't even be a little bit offended. I love it. That's a beautiful language. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, uh, so Banks Horse wants to know, uh, do you think uh, Blakovich or Yuri is the tougher fight? Oh, this is a very good question. Uh, if you're asking me, uh, physically wise, physically is harder for me, uh, Jan Blachowicz. Style wise, gonna be harder a year. Mm, yeah. Interesting. You know what? I've got a quick question. Stay on Hamilton. You don't have to yeah. jump off. Um, and uh, I'm thinking before I ask this question because I don't want to be insensitive. Anthony Smith, you've shared an octagon with him. You know how yes. capable he is. He's a great fighter. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, and, and you know, as fighters, we have ups and downs and all the rest of it. Yes. Would you have any words of advice for Anthony Smith right now? I would love uh, that he comes to Vienna and we can train together and tr and 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 share the mat together. I think uh, he can learn from me and I can learn from him because everybody knows anything, you know. And he's a great guy. Uh, I like him a lot. And I think uh, no, I don't think I know that he's gonna come back on this winning streak, mm. you know. And and because he still has has it, you know, in the fire in it. But you know. Talking about the last fight, it was a short notice fight and against a very, very unique fighter that you really need the time to get ready for it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, and I've got one question to follow up. I'm can I come with you? Because I want to go to Vienna. Yes, please. Yes, I please. want you to show me around. I don't know about how much training I'll do. I will. I'll train. I'll come in. I'll, I've still got it, kids. But I want to fucking come and believe you me special to Vienna. Yes, please. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Please come, you know, we can organize after the fight, you know, after my fight, you and Anthony for a week, we can train, we can have some uh, time together. I show you Vienna, I show you some, you know, things outside of Vienna, beautiful, you know, probably if you want, we can go also to Serbia. It's only five hours by, oh. by, by, by car, you know, you eat some very good food. So, so I don't want to put any extra pressure on you. If you win, we'll do this. If you lose, <laughs> we will. It's off the table. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, hey, I'm hundred percent hey, in. Uh, 
that gives that gives us a good excuse to come and visit a beautiful place. Harrington, what else yes. do we have? Uh, all right, this is a pretty silly one. So Jim Miller uh, was the other guest on this episode, um, and uh, Carl Heward wants to know how many Jim Millers do you think you could beat at one time? I apologize. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> no, this man is a legend, man. Correct. I respect him hundred percent. You know, and. Uh, I can't answer this because uh, maybe he's submitting me in five seconds. You, you don't know. He, he would man. submit Brock Lesnar with a Kimura. Uh, that's what yeah. he said. Uh, Alex, uh, it's, uh, you got one more, Hamilton? Yeah, so uh, I just thought this one uh, from Scoo Ski was interesting. So you've had nearly two years out of the octagon uh, by the time you fight at UFC th uh, 300 here. What have you been doing to pass the time? Uh, recovering, uh, watching a lot of fights, studying, you know, the fighting game and uh, training, uh, uh, training, you know, when I, when I was able to, you know, the, the all, all martial arts. And what I found a new sport for me is bicycling. You know, I bought a very good, nice bike uh, in the mountains, you know, in, in, on, the, on the road, you know, it's very good for my, for my head to just, you know, no think, you know, this is the old, this is the first thing what I, what I, what I, what I, learn you know what i figured out for me that what i when i'm doing that i don't think on anything because if you do mma if you do any martial arts you always need to think you know the next steps so on on this i just drive and don't think you know and this yeah, i've been yeah. doing yeah no no it's it's good to clear the head clear the yes. head and just like be alone with your thoughts and things like that so 100 all right yeah. well listen Talking of being alone, we will leave you alone. Alex, really appreciate your time, brother. It's been a long time Thank since you. we spoke. I'm a big fan of your work. Yeah. I cannot wait for the comeback. It's going to be a great fight, and I wish you nothing but all the big success. So thank you, Alex. Take thank care. you, Mike, and see you in Vegas, yeah? See you in Vegas, buddy. All the best. Thank, thank you. you. There he is, the one and only Rocket. Another nice guy. Very much so. Very respectful. You know, I mean, how many guys who would come on here who would be like, yeah, I mean, I could take three Jim Millers. It's like he shut that down instantly. Very respectful. I, 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 I'm not giving you shit, Harrington, but I, I put the tweet out, right? And, and believe it or not, I do visit the, tw the, the, the tweet and see what the responses are. I saw that one. I shimmied right past it. I'm like, we're not asking that. We've been through that. We had that. And Harrington just zeroes in on it straight away. Of course. Of course. Well, it is the first uh, number one story. You're absolutely right, Harrington, in the notes. <laughs> there it is. You were correct, and I apologize. <laughs> UFC 300, of course, Jim Miller and Bobby Green. We spoke about that. Justin Gagey taking on Max Holloway. Uh, I was a little surprised, obviously. We just had Islam recently put that tweet out saying Justin Gagey, June 8th, I think he said, uh, and now it's taking on Max Holloway. Um, it's kind of... <laughs> I don't want to be disrespectful to Max Holloway because the man's an absolute legend, but I think most people are probably going to favor just engaging in that matchup, even though Holloway's incredible. He's a great striker. I just think, and again, again, I could be very, very wrong. So it's not like an official prediction, but my, my, my initial thoughts when I heard about that is like, you probably favor just engage you given how competent his striking is, how fast, how much he's still improving. Obviously, that fight with Fazivi looked incredible. Knocked out Dustin Poirier in round one. Um, but of course, it's two human beings, two professional fighters. Max Holloway was a dominant champion for a long time and the second best featherweight on planet Earth right now. Of course, Ilya Taporia might pip him to that post, if you will, if he beats Volkanovski. Uh, but... So in, in some ways, it's still a little bit of a risk. What do you think? I mean, what I don't understand why it's a why it's a risk. Like for for me well, at least, I guess because if he loses, I guess that takes in the, in the short term a fight with Makachev off the table. Or oh, for Gaethje, you mean it's a risk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I thought yeah. you were. I thought you were talking about for Holloway. It's like Holloway is the this is this is like the dream dream spot for him. Yeah, for Gaethje, I mean, I I don't know. I mean, I guess the the other alternative is you're just sitting on the shelf for you know over a year, and it's like for somebody mm. like Gaethje who is in the prime of his career who can capitalize on on 
you know, he won this BMF title, which everyone was saying is, is, you know, it, it's as good as an interim title, right? It's a, it's a, you know, a, a fr- a cut the front of the line uh, to, for the next uh, lightweight title shot. But I mean, you know, we, we we're now being told Oliveira versus Armand is the number one contender fight. So it's like, wh- where does that leave Justin Gaethje? If he's not going to fight anyone, but, but, you know, for the title at, at 155, what else are you going to do? It, if anything, this is, this is, you know, We've seen Max Holloway at lightweight before. To me, yeah. he does not belong at lightweight. Yeah, you know, yeah, like there, yeah. his boxing is extremely crisp. He can do X, Y, and Z, but he does not have the most power even at 145. So now going up against these 155ers, it's like, it, I don't know. I, yeah, to me, yeah. this is the best way for Gaethje to stay active. Yeah, I mean, I guess, and this is just my assumption, which of course can always be wrong. I assumed that Oliveira and Sarukian would be fighting for the number one contender spot after Gagey, right? Because I feel like most people kind of expected Gagey to fight Makachev. So I just assumed that. Maybe that's incorrect. But I would have thought in the meantime, in the interim, Makachev and Gagey fight, and the next contender will be Armin or Oliveira. Uh, and and you and you're right. Look, listen. This is why people love Max Holloway so much, right? He's gone up to lightweight before against Dustin Poirier to fight for the interim belt. wasn't successful. When the uh, the distance with Poirier, uh, but but yeah, but G- Gagey, he he's bigger, he's stronger. I don't think he'll wrestle because he just never does. But he has that in his back pocket if he wants to. I don't think Holloway would be successful and again I'm not saying this as like I'm ripping on Holloway far from it I'm just looking at the facts I don't think Holloway would be successful with a takedown approach and that's not his style anyway that's not what he goes for Uh, and even at 145 as you mentioned he's more of an accumulator right he he wears people down and that's when he gets the finishes in the later rounds he's not a one punch KO guy so on paper it seems like a tough matchup of course on the flip side of what I was just saying, yeah, there's nothing to lose for Max Holloway because Holloway is in a tough situation, right? I don't think there's a massive outcry for the fourth fight right now with Volkanovski, right? And and I guess Holloway in some ways maybe might hope that Taporia dethrones Volkanovski, of course, because then that opens the door for him to make a return. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess he's just staying active, taking on big fights, uh, trying to become a BMF, you know, taking on tough challenges. That's what it's all about. You know, when it's all said and done, when you retire as a fighter, you want to look back and be like, you know what? I had the big fights. I took on the tough challenges. I tested myself, you know, it's no fun going out there and having fights that, you know, you can win. Don't get me wrong. There's one side of it. That's fun. You get paid. You get that rush of being a winner. You get the applause from a certain subsect of fans, you know, but one could say that that's being a bully, like a Tom Aspinall taking on Alex Pereira, (laughs) right? You you, Like most fights, you go in there and you you don't know if you're going to win, you know, and this will be one of those situations for Max Holloway, which is, again, why I respect him so much for taking this fight because, you know, that's going to be one of these situations where it's like, shit, you know, on paper, everyone says I lose this fight. So I'm going to work my ass off. I'm going to prepare accordingly. I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to make the reads. I'm going to study his fights. And I'm going to come up with a tremendous game plan. And I'm going to get the win. But that's a risky move. Granted, if he loses, he doesn't drop down in anybody's respect, I don't think. I think he's standing at 145 will not be affected at all. I think it's a fun fight for the fans. It's an incredible addition to UFC 300. A BMF belt. Straw weight bell. Uh, yeah. Initial thoughts though on that, Harrington. Well, I mean, like, you know, I, for Max, right? Like, he fits the descriptor perfectly. What's more BMF than being like, okay, I'm 0 1 at lightweight, but I'm going to go up and face maybe the most dangerous, hardest hitting, like the human highlight reel, Justin Gaethje? Like, that's, I don't know. Uh, it, certainly, he qualifies, you know, just accepting the fight. He, he, he qualifies to fight for the belt. Um, but on the flip side, I there I do have have a have an issue with just one thing you said there. Like it it could affect his standing at at 145 in the sense that if Ilya Taporia does get this win uh, against Volkanovski, it would make sense that Max would be the next in line. If he gets stopped by Justin Gaethje, that's probably no longer the case. No, that's a fair point. That is actually a fair point because I forgot that that fight's taking place 
before, right? That's going down. What is it? Next month? Yeah, next yeah. month. In I'm, your I'll backyard. In that one. Yeah, in my backyard. Uh, and you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a very, very good point. Because if he beats Volkanovsky, what do you think? Do you think they would do an immediate rematch? Because generally people that have defended the belt as long as Volk, sometimes they do. And it wouldn't be a shock if they did. Uh, but if they didn't, the next person would be Max Holloway, Ilya Taporia as a matchup that's phenomenal. For Max Holloway, in terms of a personal situation, it's incredible. Finds himself back fighting for the belt again, you know. So, so yeah, you're right. There is, there's definitely a risk there. In fact, there's a huge risk. Because I think generally, I think the general consensus would be if you ask people to choose right now, they will probably say just engage it. Right, for all the reasons that we just spoke about. And one thing, I saw a meme doing the rounds when it first got announced. Will this be the end of Max, Holloway, le Max Holloway's legendary chin? Right, because when you go through Justin Gagey, 25 wins, 20 knockouts. Knocked out Dustin Poirier. Um, all right, Rafael Fazeev bust him up pretty good. Didn't get the knockout, but he bust him up well. Michael Chandler. Fight of the year, incredible performance, an absolute brawl. Tony Ferguson, he, that, that, was, that was the beginning of the end for Tony Ferguson. Donald Cerrone, was that the beginning of the end? I don't know, but he knocked him out in stunning fashion in round one. Edson Barboza, round one. James Vick, oh, James Vick, that knockout over him. One punch, boom, just sat him down. That was amazing. Michael Johnson, in his UFC debut, after getting pieced up a little bit at the beginning, he found the range, got the stoppage in round two. So I saw this meme, yeah, and the question is, will this be the end of Max Holloway's legendary chin? And that could be another potential risk. And it's like, yeah, I mean, somebody like Max, who, you know, I mean, it, dating back to, what is this, six, seven years ago now, when, when you know, when you called him out uh, uh, heading into the thing, like, I, I, I've been... I've had that like on my radar since then, you know, like when, when is Max's chin finally going to get cracked? And it's like, now you're going in there against the guy who that's all he does to be. And it's like, mm. that is, it's absolutely terrifying. And the fact that Alexander Volkanovsky was saying, please don't let Ilya Taporia fight Max Holloway. You know what I mean? Yeah, like he, yeah. he asked to keep him away from Holloway. And it's like, you're, you're putting yourself in, in, you know, in potential danger. But I mean, that is, I guess, where, you do get legends from, you know, because if Max Holloway can somehow find a way to get this done against Justin Gaethje, a whole new world is opened up. And this is why, again, you got to love Max, because remember, he was, I think it was in, it was when the whole Connor and Habib thing went down. I think it was. Max Holloway stepped up on short notice. Was it then? Oh, uh, I believe actually it was when Tony Ferguson got hurt, but I, I... Ah, no, you're right. It was. It was, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and Holloway stepped up, short notice, withdrew from the fight. What happened? Was it the weight cut or something it like that? It was the weight cut, remember. yeah. He had, like, a medical yeah. issue during the weight cut. Yeah, yeah. And then who stepped in? Alaya Quinta. Mm -hmm. And Alaya Quinta actually gave Habib a pretty decent fight, if I recall. Well, he did. I do recall it. I remember it. Went perfectly. the distance. Went, went the distance and did all right, was able to stop the takedowns. And we saw the Khabib striking. We saw him using that jab. The very, very good effect. Uh, but listen, first and foremost, you just got to say, respect Max Holloway, right? Absolute respect. I mean, stepping up against Khabib, you know, I mean, the, the people that he's beaten, you forget. You forget because when you think of Max Holloway now, you think about, yeah, okay, he lost three times to just uh, to, uh, Alexander Volkanovsky, right? But when I go down, I'm scrolling down to it here, Chang Sung Jung retired him in Singapore. Arnold Allen ended his 11 fight streak. Yair Rodriguez, who was the interim champion recently, beat him. Kelvin Cater, I'm the best boxer in the UFC, bra. Frankie Edgar stopped Brian Ortega, stopped Jose Aldo two times in a row, stopped Anthony Showtime Pettis, Ricardo Lamas at UFC 199. Remember that fight where they just pointed at the ground? Well, well. Holloway pointed at the ground and said, come on, let's do this. Let's throw down. I mean, that's legendary shit. Jeremy Stevens beat him, has a win over Charles Oliveira, a TKO in round one. Cub Swanson, guillotine choke, Cole Miller, Akira Karasana. You've got to go all the way back to Conor McGregor. I mean, you want to talk about a legendary career and a man that has gone out there, defended the belt, 
God, how many times did he defend? So he, he won the bell from Jose. No, won the bell off Anthony Pettis, the interim, unified against Jose Aldo, defended against Jose, beat Brian Ortega, fought for the interim, lightweight belt, tried to become a double champ, lost, uh, defended again. So he defended one, two, three, four times. He de defended the, the uh, featherweight belt four times, then lost to Volkanovski. I mean, unreal. Unbelievable. Love that guy. Yeah. He's had an absolutely incredible career. And this is, a, I'm hyped for this. I'm glad he's on 300. No, me too. Me too. Me too. Uh, you didn't do a good enough job of shit stirring the DC thing with Jim Miller. I'm just going to throw that out there. You know, you were too polite. I was. I was. I had, I found like the, 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 the quote just a little bit too late for that one. So my bad. Well, well. Well, I'll, I'll let you off. I'll let you off, seeing as people say I pick on you all the time. All right, today's episode is sponsored by Prize Picks, which is the largest independently owned fantasy sports platform in North America. Daily fantasy sports, DFS, is the most exciting way to play. It's just you against the numbers, and you're not battling against thousands of other players, professional sharks, and all the rest of it. You just pick more or less. It's that easy. And by the way, you can 25x your money. Okay, so you're an MMA fan. You're watching it this weekend. It's this easy. Sean Strickland, will he land more or less than 72.5 significant strikes? Pretty easy. I say more. Movsar Evloev, will he land more or less than three takedowns? Sorry, 3.5 takedowns. And Mike Malott, again, over or under. 32.5 significant strikes. There are the picks this week. It's very, very easy. Price Picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Tack or Tuesday. Price Picks discounts selects player projections of up to 25% to provide even more value. You can use this on Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account. And listen, this works on Android, iOS devices, all that good stuff. So give it a shot. What are you waiting for? It's the easiest way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash believe. Use the code believe for a deposit match of up to $100. Prizepicks.com. First time users, you get a deposit match of up to $100. Right. So, Brian, join the show, brother, if you want to. We're just going to run through uh, the card this weekend and give some quick predictions and analysis. First of all, if you're looking at the fight right now, What's your fight of the night? Because I've got my pick already. It is jumping off the page at me. Charles R. Jordan versus Sean Woodson. That fight's going to be ridiculous. I love watching Sean Woodson fights. I think he's like 6'3 for a featherweight. Beautiful boxing. Charles Jordan always in uh, fun fights, Spartan, Sparta kicks and all the rest of it. That's my fight of the night. What do you think? You know, I'm always a fan of Pollyanna Vienna, Mike. No, <laughs> who's she going up against? Uh, oh, Gillian Robertson. There you go. So that's Brian's. No, I think somewhat, uh, Arnold. Somewhat unexpected choice. No, I think it's Arnold Allen. Um, who's he fighting? Uh, Mossbar. Yeah, I think that fight's going to be a banger. All right, stole well, your pick, there Harrington. Goes, there goes my first and second <laughs> pick. But you know what? I'm just going to say the fight that I'm most excited for uh, on this whole card: Mike Malott in Canada. Like the 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 people go crazy for that guy remember when the, the 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 stanchion for the barricade fell off last time that guy was making the ring walk uh in canada i i feel like the crowd is going to go absolutely nuts for him this is a big spot against neil magny um so yeah i'm i'm hyped for this yeah, fight yeah yeah all right well let's start the main card arnold allen moffs are Evloev. love arnold allen love what he's done i mean rebounding off that loss to holloway and taking on moffs are who's 17 and 0 stylistically a tough matchup a russian wrestler great strike and decent subs as well uh, I got to go with Arnold Allen now. You know, uh, I'm a big fan of the Almighty One. Arnold's great. Uh, what do you think? This is a situation where I I would like Arnold Allen to win, but he's fighting a guy whose last name ends in OV or yeah. EV. Close enough, hey, brother. Brother, <laughs> yeah, every time they talk like this, you know it's very You're bad trouble. situation. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Number one bullshit. Well, yeah. 
That's how I see it. That's how I feel Di- about it. Diego, Diego Lopez nearly caught him, though, several times in submissions when he took him down because he wasn't liking what was going on on the feet. Right. Arnold on the feet is very slick. He's got good boxing. He's got big power. He's a ridiculous athlete as well. Uh, and Maybe I'm just trying to will it into existence, but as I say, my pick is Arnold. I'll tell you right now, I, I, Movsar Ivalov, he's a, he's a favorite in this fight. If this fight happened before Arnold Allen fought Max Holloway, Arnold Allen would be like a minus 150, minus 170 favorite. So I, I feel like the reason that he's an underdog is because everyone has the Holloway fight in his mind. And Holloway just makes people who are very, very good look average. So I, I'm going to say Arnold Allen is a, is a good spot here. Holloway makes them hollow. There's going to be some kind of play on words there. Ooh, yeah, he, he hollows, hollows them out. out. Hollows them out. Uh, Chris Curtis, the action man, taking on the power bar. Mark Andre Barrio. I think Curtis is faster. I think he's more powerful. Andre Barrio is a good fighter. He's Canadian. He's going to have the crowd on his side. He's going to want to go out there, put on a big performance. Chris Curtis, though, he's proven that he can beat you know these guys that aren't the top dogs, so to speak. He lost to Gastelum in a close fight, and yeah, all right, granted, Gastelum's lost quite a bit. Jack O'Manson, he lost to him. Other than that, he's had some great wins. You know, uh, Jack O'Manson was a weird fight, that one. I called it in London. I think Curtis, uh, sorry, Chris Curtis has the tools, the speed, and the striking to get this one done. And I think, wasn't Chris Curtis on like four days' notice for that fight, too? Like, I, I feel like he was supposed to fight Darren Till, maybe, right? And then Chris Curtis came in last minute. If I'm remembering that correctly, because there was rumors Darren was going to be in his corner, again, could be 100% wrong on this, but. Uh, yeah, I agree, dude. I think like Mark Andre Barriol, he lands six strikes per minute, but he eats another five. And the way Chris Curtis lands on people with 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 Mark's level of defense, I I don't know, dude. I I he finds good counter shots. I feel like he has the power to put him down. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Chris Curtis on this one. And with double the f- the professional fights, or more than double the professional fights, I would say that he probably has a little bit of edge and experience and. Let's go with that. Yeah. It's all let's, back, Chris let's, Curtis. That's a great, logical, uh, I haven't done my research answer. It was great. <laughs> it was. You know what I mean? That's what yeah, you man. do. You piggyback. Oh, yeah, great, guys. Yeah, I'm, I actually like That's a great point when you made that. Um, you know, the, the, Yeah, no, of course. That's what you're <laughs> Half of this job is just bullshitting your way through life. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because I was talking to Callum as well, because he was like, he's trying to find a job and all the rest of it. And he's like, uh, there's uh, some jobs in sales. He's like, I don't know anything about sales. I said, do you think I knew anything about commentating or working on TV when I started? <laughs> you know what I mean? You fucking learn. You get on with it. You, 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 you dig your heels in. You get stuck in. You figure it out. I said, and if a last resort, you just bullshit your way through it. He goes, yeah, I'm pretty good at that. I yeah, said, yeah, man. that's life, bro. You bullshit your way. <laughs> you fake it until you make it. But the deal. that's how we're here now. Yeah, yeah dude. You, you, you <laughs> tell him, just tell him about how great you were at door-to-door sales, dude. Just give him a little pep talk. I don't think he's doing door-to-door, though. Uh, Neil Magnet, Mike Malart, Mike Malart, keep an eye out on that name. Ten and one, all stoppages, freak athlete, great submissions, great striking. All finishes, as I said, in the UFC and throughout his career. Neil Magnet, we love the guy. How can you not like him? He's a fan favorite. Miles on the clock. Very tall, very long, very experienced. I think this is a a, a springboard potentially for Mike Mallott to go out there on a pay-per-view, on a main car, to get the recognition that he deserves, to turn him into a star, to harness that uh, Canadian fan base. They've given him the opportunity but he's going to rise up to the challenge, right? They'll set you up like this, but you've still got to go out there and beat Neil Magnet. This is not a gimme. It's a give in terms of opportunity. You know what I mean? But it's now when opportunity knocks, can Mike Malot answer the door? Because if not, Neil Magnet will knock him in the face. But I do think Mike Malot probably takes this one, certainly after the performance that Neil had against uh, Ian Gary. Right. And I mean, it's like, you know, Ian Gary was literally sitting there being like, I mean, I could have finished him. I just didn't want to take any risk. Mike Malott is not built that way, dude. Mike Malott, he he goes for it at all times. The guy is a finisher. He's made that his brand. Uh, Neil Magny has the most wins by decision. This ain't going to a decision. I'm just that that's I'm going to pick Mike Malott by submission in the second round. That's very specific. I like yep. Mike Malott in this fight. I just uh, I don't know how it's going to happen, man. 
Like, um, Neil Magny has not impressed me over the past, I don't know, two years. Everybody. Think, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. Sorry, I thought. I thought. I was going to say everybody who he's fought with a, any any decent name in in the in the company, he's gotten finished or finished or went to a decision, whatever. He's lost to him all. I just feel I have to outdo Harrington with his specificness. You know, okay. so I'm going to say Mike Malott, Um, first minute of round three, Ooh. right? Wow. It's going to be 47 seconds into the round. <laughs> He's going to give him a beat down in round two, right? Neil Magny is going to be on shaky legs. <laughs> round three is going to pick it up. He's going to pick it up. Uh, somehow the transition will happen where Malott will take the back and he will win by a rear naked shot. 47 seconds. You heard it here. 47 seconds. Bow, 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 bow. It's All right. Vegas. I'm, I'm betting that. That's crazy. You can bet the individual minute that it ends. Yeah, that must skyrocket your odds. Uh, Myra Bueno Silva talked about that earlier. I think she becomes the champion. The potential that she defends it for a while. Boys, what, who you got? Go ahead. Well, I think Raquel Pennington is good in pretty much every aspect of MMA. Um, you know, she's a very well rounded fighter. It's why she keeps finding herself in you know, the top five and, and constantly in title contention. But I, I mean, my Buena Silva is special in uh, yeah. in a couple of areas. And one of them being, you know, uh, obviously the ninja chokes she got Holly home with. So I'm going to favor uh, Silva in this fight. And then Juliana Pena. She will be coming to the forefront. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's that's a big, big threat for her. And then, of course, we've got the main event, Drinkers Duplessis, Sean Strickland. The press conference will be happening very shortly, actually. So I'll be tuning into that. We picked that. We've all got drinkers. Best of luck to both men. They've made it very entertaining. And that's why I love this sport, because of all the unique characters. Sean is by far my favorite UFC personality in a long time. I wonder why that is, Brian. Hey, man. It's because he's been <laughs> telling it like it is. <laughs> no, he does tell it like it is, or like how he thinks it is. Uh, you know, but but I respect his honesty. I do. I I I love that about the guy. I do. We're missing a lot um, of that. And and this isn't anything personal. I just I just feel when I look at them both as fighters, I lean towards Drakus and the violence that he's provided so far. And it's been so far so good. And I think he continues. Maybe fights Israel Adesanya next or Hamza. Who bloody knows? But I think I think there's some fun times and big paydays ahead for Drakus Duplessis. But got to get through it. Uh, listen, guys, if you've got a question, please send them in to bympod at gmail.com. The more interesting, the more obscure, the more off the beaten path in terms of questions, the better. And if you're listening on Spotify, where you find podcasts, make sure to subscribe. Leave us a five star rating, positive review. It really helps out on those platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and you hit that notification bell to find out whenever a new episode drops. And if you want to catch over 500 episodes, you can't find anywhere else completely ad free and totally uncensored. Head to gasdigital.com. Use the promo code BYM. Get a seven day free trial and check out over 20 great shows on the network. Nicely done. All right. And uh, our first question here today, you might have to break down the accent here, Mike, but uh, this is from. Adam. What's up, boys? Adam from Gloucester in England here. Uh, huge, huge fan of the show. Bispin, you're the f***ing man. Um, you're just awesome, dude. Uh, quick question. Um, if Dana came up to you, Mike, and offered you a skating job for young British talent in the UK to bring them to the UFC, would it be something you would consider? Maybe further down the line? Um, also, if you could shout at my brother Stevie... Like, he's the biggest UFC fan I know, um, and he loves his show more than anything. So, shout out for him would be awesome. Um, Brian, please bring back Conspiracy Corner weekly. I love that shit. It's awesome. And Harrington, you, bro. But you're signed anyway. I quite like you. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Adam. We appreciate that, the love and support. And uh, what was it? Uh, how do you say it in Serbian? Yet brero. I think you nailed it. Yes, yes. Um, yes I think you are on, on mute, Harrington. Yes, you're As on I should mute. Be. Yes, so now yeah. you is for real. Adam, thank you very much. And what was his brother? No, that was Adam. What was his brother called? Stevie was his brother. Stevie. Shout out, Stevie. Stevie from Gloucester, big fan of BYM. You know what? When I went back home to England for Christmas, uh, and this is just like kissing our own asses for a minute, so I apologize. But the amount of people that I bumped into 
that, that were big fans of the podcast. So I really appreciate that. And, you know, like, it's, it's, it's great. Oh, I sound like a wanker now, but, you know, when people stop me, hey, this being great fire, whatever, can I get a picture or whatever? You know, I'm always like, yeah, sure, 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 for the most part, for it, unless I'm in a rush or whatever. But regardless of what I'm doing, if someone says, love the podcast, boom, you got my attention straight away because I'm like, wow, that's awesome. You know what I mean? Because obviously the fights, they're international. Do you know what I mean? They're put on by the UFC. But our little rinky-dink show, if people are like, oh, no, I love the podcast. We watch it every week. I'm like, man, come over here. Give me a hug. You know, <laughs> Give me a kiss. What's your phone number? We should be best friends. Um, so what was his name again, the brother? Stevie. Stevie. There we go. Sorry, Stevie. Uh, all the best to you. Now, if Dana White offered me a job recruiting younger talent in the UK, of course, I would bite his hands off. I would do that in a heartbeat. And... That is, um, you know, I do want to get into coaching and stuff like that. I still want to, I love mixed martial arts. And I know I've been talking, I mentioned it again. We are going to move someplace with land and get all the rest of it. One of the things that I'm going to do is open my own gym on there. And I'm going to, it's going to be sick. And I don't know where it's going to be, but local fighters, because I'll need something to do. If I'm out in the wilderness and Rebecca's milking cows, uh, I'm going to need something to fill my time with. So, you know, but. That ain't going to be England, but if, to answer your question, and I do want to do something in the UK. We have UFC gyms, which uh, hopefully will be spreading and growing rapidly over the next few years, but there's a great next generation of fighters just waiting to be discovered. So there we go. There's the answer. Right. That, seem, that seems like the coolest job. What's that, Talent Scout? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so, oh, sorry, we have choices here. Uh, there is a vaguely silly question, and then something doubling back to something we talked about last week. I want the vaguely silly question without question. <laughs> All right, well, you asked for it. Okay. If you were in a guillotine, would lubing your finger up and sticking it in your opponent's ear be a good way to get out of the choke? You weren't kidding. It was a stupid question. <laughs> but I will say this. It's a very serious man. That's like Brian. You know, like the voice of God. If you were in a guillotine, would you put your <laughs> finger up and put it in their ear? No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't do jack shit. First thing you want to do if you're in a guillotine is fight the hands. You got to grab the hands here and try to separate the grip. If you can grab this part of the thumb here, you can get it there and start pulling that. And obviously, you can start breaking the grip. Uh, another thing what you can do is if you're pulling on the hands here, sometimes you can take this arm, put it under their head, right? And then you turn on your side and you put a bit of shoulder pressure in, um, in, in their neck as you're fighting the hands. And then you want to, and then hopefully you open the hands, you open, you open one leg, you pass guard, all the rest of it. I haven't done jujitsu for a little bit, getting back to it soon. Um, but now I'm going to get back to my family. I'm going to get back to my life. I'm starving. I've only had a little bit of fruit and yogurt. I'm withering away, Harrington. Um, big fights this weekend. We'll be back on Monday with Anthony Smith going through all of those, uh, all of the action at the weekend. So please stay tuned. Uh, subscribe and ring the bell, as Harrington said. Enjoy your weekends. See you on Monday.